Handcuffs! Handcuffs! Morning, sir. Morning. 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 Is this testing seats by numbers? David?
just a smile. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What wasn't interrupting your social schedule? Oh, 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 Time for a sharp oh, exit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're doing the thing, you know. Davy and Emma got Davy and Davy are cold. After that. Smart 
will have again to be in the old days, coming forward at the same time. Without intervals, by the left, dress. Stand up, eat. <laughs> Don't sh show the oh, oh, no, 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 <laughs> But I've got another thing over the top, you see that thing all there. He doesn't care what's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I must I must thank you guys for um speaking to him up top, but it's nice out. <laughs> Oh, they're going to be a copy of this. Oh, no, I dare say there will be. It's going to be with the right firm, isn't it? <laughs> Good. Go. Open order. March. Go. 
seems to be thing seems to be organized for a rather smaller man than myself. Uh, Lord Provost, Commodore Pemberton, Commander Simpson, distinguished guests, officers and ship's company of Claver House, and previous officers and members of the ship's company, ladies and gentlemen. This time last week, I was in the middle of a parade up in the Orkneys. There was a biting northerly wind blowing and prolonged flurries of sleet and snow interrupted the proceedings. And what a difference a week can make and how appropriate that the weather should smile upon us and smile upon Claver House as they sadly parade for the last time. I would first like to congratulate you on your turnout and on the drill that I've seen in the guard. Both are immaculate and of a very high standard. And that high standard, I think, has typified the whole history of Claver House. It was 1914, some 80 years ago, that the Edinburgh companies of the RNVR were formed. And as the war clouds gathered then, they were drafted mainly into the RN division where they served with great distinction from Gallipoli through to Antwerp. A record of service that's been maintained to this day. In 1921, HMS Claverhouse became an RNVR name and they took over an old monitor, M23, which was berthed in the West Old Dock at Leith. And in the interwar years, the numbers began to grow until in 1939, with the outbreak of the Second World War, there were over 150 officers and men who volunteered and were very shortly thereafter mobilized. They too served with distinction, this time throughout the fleet, in all types of ships, from battleships right down to motor torpedo boats. In the post-war years, once again, we saw Claver House build up. We saw their own motor minesweeper added and in the early 50s, of course, the Tun class of blessed memory appeared. In 1952, the women's division was formed, and very quickly the numbers there, too, crept up to above 50. In 1974, Claver House was selected to do a trial to see whether uh, an RNR unit could operate and maintain a hunt class minesweeper. They need, of course, have had no doubts about that. The trial was a resounding success, and Kettleston was added to Claver House's inventory. In 86, the final allocation was made when HMS Fay appeared and she too had a fine record of service in the 10th, including acting as escort to Her Majesty the Queen in 1989. Ladies and gentlemen, HMS Claver House has enjoyed a long and illustrious history. She has worn the White Ensign in the city of Edinburgh with the very greatest distinction. 
I would like to pay tribute to you and to all hands, both past and present, who by their professionalism and their dedication have contributed to this fine record. The country owes you a considerable debt of gratitude. Thank you. among the brick warehouses where the old wooden church of Scotland chapel used to be. It wasn't a soul to be seen, and yet for a few moments I had the impression of being with thousands of people. It wasn't a ghost. It was just almost like sensing the feet of countless matulos who had passed by on their business in days when our navy was the world's greatest sea power. Maybe Someday, someone in Leaf Docks or here at Granton will have a similar sensation because 81 years of committed human spirit must leave something behind. And today, we are here for them also, for the men and women for whom naval service was not a career. It was a commitment, a commitment which, as we have heard during the Great War, took them to service with the Royal Naval Division with distinction, and in the war against Hitler, to serve with the Navy in some of its most hazardous tasks. A commitment which again, as we have heard, in peacetime, let us here prove our worth in taking on new responsibilities and learning new skills. A commitment symbolized by the fact that four of our commanding officers were promoted to Commodore because 4th Division was the best. Our emblem has been the Phoenix. They believed that after 500 years, the Phoenix built itself a funeral pyre from the ashes of which a fresh Phoenix arose. Perhaps someday there may come such a fire which will call again for men and women who have the volunteer spirit for whom the service is more than a career and is certainly a commitment. But for now, the Queen's ministers have judged that the nation has no more use for what we have done here. So be it. And let the final thoughts be not from ancient legend, but from the living word of God. Tomorrow, Holy Week begins. Facing his own death, our Lord said, Truly I say to you, 
Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The phoenix of forth now rests, but the fruit of what has been here, commitment and loyalty, the volunteer spirit and comradeship does not die today. It will remain with us always. Thanks be to God. In thanksgiving for Claverhouse, for the Royal Naval Reserve, and for its predecessor, the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, let us join our hearts and minds in prayer to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we feel the warmth of your Son upon our backs and upon our faces. And yet for many of us, our hearts feel cold because we experience a sense of loss, a kind of grief. Lord, in that bereavement, give comfort and strength to these people and to remember that Clever House has been great, that the memories and the emotions which stir in this square here and now are not forgotten or lost, but they are there to be passed on, there to be shared with others, that they too might live with courage and hope and service. Service to the Royal Navy, to this country, to the peace and hope of the world. Heavenly Father, we pray for all this ship's company and the officers, for their families, for those who have served in days past, for those who gave their lives serving in the Royal Naval Reserve. Lord Christ, wherever these people go now, may their training, their skill, their sense of loyalty, their team spirit be used wisely and well with humane and loving courage. And for those who transfer to Scotia, may they take with them friendship understanding and a determination to carry on and to serve as long as they have strength and will. Heavenly Father, the motto of this unit has been gang for it. May we all go forward with hope, grace, mercy and peace and in the name of christ our savior and lord he who was the very master of the waters he who could walk upon the deep he who could calm the waves lord be with the depths of our being and calm our hearts and minds on this day Amen. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and with those with whom you will serve now and forever. Amen.
officers and senior ratings platoon will face the end side. Left and right. Turn! Turn! Ready! My Lord Provost, please accept our ensign, worn with pride for generations, into the care and custody of the city for safekeeping until one day the Royal Naval Reserve returns to Edinburgh. Officers and men and women of Faber House, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Good afternoon to you. As Lord Provost and as Lord Lieutenant of the City of Edinburgh, I accept this white ensign on behalf of the city with the assurance that it will be kept in safekeeping and as an acknowledgement of the long association between the City of Edinburgh and the Royal Naval Reserve. You need be in no doubt, sir, that it is with the most sincere regret that I attend this occasion, for Edinburgh has been proud of that association which has existed for decades with the 4th Division RNR and with its predecessor, the RNBR. And may I say, ladies and gentlemen, personally, how very much I've enjoyed my association with the unit over these few years which I've been able to enjoy it, and how very much personally today I regret that this ceremony is taking place. This would not, I think, be an appropriate occasion on which to make public comment on the circumstances which have led to the closure of HMS Claver House and the disbandment of our company. It would, however, be appropriate and entirely fitting for me to express thanks to generations of men and women who have given service here in wartime and in peace, and also on this occasion to all of their families. It is appropriate, too, to note that this is a time in our history when any of us have a serious concern for our society, for any of us to recognize that what we require more than ever are young men and young women who can exercise discipline and self-control, who have respect for one another, who have respect for society, either as individuals or as a community at large, who are able to enjoy themselves and whose recreation is wholesome and stimulating without harming others. And these ladies and gentlemen are some of the qualities and some of the values which our young people need. We don't require a government to tell us what these values should be. Perhaps rather we should ask them if they realize the value of what they have in Claver House and the value of what they are losing today and whether they appreciate what that loss will mean. Well, of course, they're not losing it entirely. As your chaplain said, there are seeds here, the fruits of which will carry on for many years to come. And I know that today the values and the discipline which the members of your company have will, will remain with them whatever their future role may be. But in Edinburgh we count it as a loss that future generations will not be able to enjoy what you have enjoyed. We count it as a loss too that our final link with a naval establishment in Edinburgh is severed. Perhaps, as you've suggested, sooner rather than later it will be uh, renewed. And ladies and gentlemen, I look forward again to the day whether, I doubt whether I'll be Lord Provost, but some other Lord Provost will be here when the White Ensign is raised again in Edinburgh. In the meantime, on behalf of the city, I thank you all for all that you have given to us. I wish every one of you well for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention. I do assure you that the city appreciates what loss it suffers today. Thank you. Watch off the guard and back. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the captain's very kindly ordered to splice the main brace. Those of you who are guests of the division are most welcome to the messes on completion of parade. Thank you very much. Bye, sir. Bye bye. Hello, <laughs> Mill. Bye, Claire. <laughs> Uh, my mum my mum said to tell you how disappointed she was she couldn't see you. Well she'll see you now. Um, so what are you gonna tell her? She's on the table. Oh. Sorry, hello oh, mum. Um, sorry I didn't see you last time. I take my hands off and I'm speaking for you. But we'll see you at some uh, minnow type family event. Sooner the better. Okay. Right. Thank you mum. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Colin. Oh. Ah. 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 You, you went on the named list. But you, were you would have been. Yeah. There's lots of extra rounds. So oh right. Yeah. How are you? Fine. Hey, well.
to go round to the bar. What about the organising
Standard X and I'm the DMEO. The main street stations I'm closed up here in HQ1. Uh, basically to look after the ship's water tight integrity while the mines sweep in. They have everything set up ready to go in case of any accidents. <laughs> Oh, now there's a thing. <laughs> nothing's changed. Correct, nothing's changed. <laughs> Bums rush as well. Oh it? yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look down here. Oh, I, 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 I never thought we'd uh, see the day when we're tossed out of the building here. You know. No. Uh, but uh, yeah, these, these things happen. I suppose. You know. I, I, I think that's enough. I'm, I'm, I'm no good on television. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm far better with a glass in my hand. Nice to see you. <laughs> Centre. My ambition when I grew up is uh, to be a petrol officer, marine engineer, mechanic. I've got a few various interests and hobbies in that in life. I do quite a lot of running, marathons and half marathons, a wee bit of cycling and quite a lot of swimming also. But I'll have to go now because I've got to go and fuel ship. So, bye! <laughs> My name is Richard Newell. I'm a seaman on board engine speed. I've just left school, uh, hopefully I'll be starting at uh, Edinburgh University in, in September to study geography. <laughs>